It's the Democrats who got caught. They got caught defending the false allegations of the Steele dossier, which was paid for by them. We should forget about them reading fabrications of Trump-Russia collusion from the Steele dossier into the congressional record. They themselves were colluding with Russia by funding and spreading the Steele dossier, which relied on Russian sources. Trump is a longtime Russian agent, as described in the Steele dossier. Uh, if you watch Trump TV on any given night or listen to the Republicans in the House Intelligence Committee, the story of the 2016 election is not an unprecedented and wildly successful intelligence operation by the Russian government to criminally sabotage an American election in favor of Donald Trump. Rather, it's a conspiracy by a small consulting firm to bring down Donald Trump, a conspiracy that resulted in Donald Trump getting elected and no one ever leaking the incendiary steel dossier during the campaign. Now, the co-founders of the uh, boutique firm at the heart of that, Fusion GPS, that's the research firm that hired Christopher Steele and paid him to compile his new now infamous dossier, they have written a book telling their side of the story. It's called Crime and Progress Inside the Steele Dossier and the Fusion GPS Investigation of Donald Trump. And Glenn Simpson and Peter Fritsch join me now. Good to have you here. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, so here's the thing that I think is the most interesting about what you say in the book, and I think the hardest for some people to believe. So I want to give as much credit as possible to your critics to start out, right? Their theory of the case is that, like, you're being paid by the Clinton campaign through the Clinton campaign lawyer, and uh, you've got you've then commissioned this ex British intelligence official to go, who's got these Russian sources, who looks into the sort of stuff that's happening with Russia. Like, obviously, the Clinton campaign is going to learn about that because you're working for them. And your contention in this book is like the firewall is so thick that they just had no idea about the stuff that's happening on this side of the project. That's not quite it. I mean, I mean, first of all, there's a timeline issue, which is that we started this investigation for the Republicans in September of 2015. So the entire predicate for what we did when we switched over to the Democrats was based on information that we gathered for the Republicans. Right. Um, so there's a flaw in the theory there. Um, when we did switch, we were communicating with a lawyer um, and we didn't know what was happening with the information from there. It's obvious from the public record that some of the information was getting to right. the Clinton campaign. The distinction is that when Christopher Steele decided it was necessary to go to the FBI, that he really thought this was a national emergency and there was going to be an attack on the United States, we didn't tell anyone because we didn't consider that to be part of the campaign or the election. Right. So that's the key point is that the Clinton campaign. I mean, this is the crazy thing about 2016. There's an FBI investigation right. of Donald Trump and his possible contacts with the Russians that does not leak during the campaign. Correct. Yeah, no, I mean, the firewall that you allude to is really methodological in nature. Uh, and it was, you know, when we first tasked Chris or hired him to do this work on behalf of the Clinton campaign, um, you know, we didn't tell him who the client was, which is actually fairly important methodologically if you were trying to conduct a, you know, a human intelligence investigation as he was. You know, we trusted him because he is one of the most accomplished foreign intelligence officials we know in the Transatlantic Alliance. We trusted him to carry that work out responsibly. So in the intelligence business and the investigations business, there's compartmentalization, which prevents information from sloshing around and getting out. Um, and then there's also just the methodological um, need to avoid confirmation bias. So if you know who your client is, that might influence what you find. Right. So what you don't want is a person selling you information that they think you want. It's a big problem in the industry. Is it? Yes. Well, just, a, you know, anyone likes to tell their boss. Or right. Their, I found know, great stuff. Well, what they want to hear. Well, so. so and one of the trajectories that happens here, as I understand it, both with Steele and with you two, is that the more information you learn, the more worried you get as essentially citizens or people and, and not in the context of the the the, right. the profile that you have as a business proposition. I mean, the, the title of the book is alludes to an act of citizenship, not to, uh, you know, a judge and jur jury role that we have assigned ourselves, right, to actually adjudicate these matters. We're, what we're saying is, you know, the equivalent is we, you're, you know, you go, you're on your way to work and you see 
uh, you know, someone robbing someone, you call the appropriate authorities to investigate and intervene. That's what we did. I mean, I should be clear that that's what Chris did. He's the intelligence professional. Mm -hmm. We're former journalists, right? We deferred to him and his judgment, and he thought it was of such a such import that he had to do right. something. Right. I mean, it. what he we said, if you and your professional judgment think that this really is going to be a digital Pearl Harbor, then we're certainly not going to stop you. So Steele has kind of earned a lot of attack for the, the, the documents. Um, uh, people have said they're, uh, uh, they're wrong, A, and B, that he himself was played by Russian disinformation, that essentially they were playing both sides of the coin. They were somehow seeding this information into him to create this kind of doubt and uh, roil up the American political system. Yeah, we've heard it all. Um, I mean, again, it doesn't make sense since the main finding of the dossier was that the Kremlin was organizing an attack on the American election system that was intended to get Donald Trump elected president of the United States. That is the top line finding. That, hard, hard to believe we agree now that we see what's going on in Ukraine. Right. right. So um, why would the Kremlin leak that? Um, why would that be disinformation? Um, it just doesn't doesn't compute. More relevantly, Chris Steele has spent a career looking at Russian disinformation, identifying it and outing it and protecting the transatlantic alliance and NATO against it. So that that, you know, we trust him to. Well, but here's the here's the final question on this, because, I mean, part of what you know, part of the way that and this is not exclusive to Russia, it's the way that sort of disinformation works more broadly. And Russia has no monopoly on that. We should sure. be very clear. It right. operates right. organically right. right here. It operates in countries around the world. Right. And we're so done. The way that disinformation operates is that it, it creates a kind of like haziness over everything where you can't really tell, like, what's true and what's not. Right. There's facts and counterfacts and things are sort of speeding by you. And I guess the question is, like. I feel like we've ended up in that place vis-a-vis -vis this whole story in many ways. Like, do you feel like you have focus, you have razor sharp vision into what actually happened in 2016 and what the nature of the connections were between the campaign and that Russian disinformation effort, which we know, now know is established? I mean, you know, it's history, right? So it's accumulating all the time. I don't wouldn't use the words laser sharp focus. I would say that we have amassed over the last three years mountains of evidence that what we saw happening in 2016 really did happen. And it was really bad. And it's about to happen again. Some of the people in the dossier are in jail now. Right. Uh, and they were not common figures. Chris Steele, I don't think when he first reported on Carter Page, ever heard of him. Right. 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 So that speaks to the um, depth of his sourcing. So we, we find that um, there is this misimpression that there's all these things that are wrong in the dossier. Yeah. And it's attributed to the messaging that you're talking about. But it's not disinformation so much from Russia as it is from Congress. So for the two years that the Republicans controlled all of Congress, Trump and the Republicans messaged consistently yeah. that there were all these problems with our work, with Chris's work. There was all these mistakes and there was no there was, you know, there was no response from anyone because no one else had a, a, a megaphone. I mean, Congressman Newt, sorry. Yeah. Well, I mean, that the, that is going to continue and only intensify, of course, as, right. uh, as the impeachment hearings go on. Glenn Simpson, Peter Fish, the book's called Crime and Progress. Thank you both. Gentlemen. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.